move on to the Calvin cycle, we want to make sure that we understand that the NADPH and the ATP produced by linear electron flow is essential for the functioning of the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle uses more ATP than it does NADPH. So there's a special type of electron flow that's used to create the additional ATP that's needed. This is called cyclic electron flow. Cyclic electron flow, in cyclic electron flow, sunlight hits P700, exciting the electrons and passing them from P700 to its primary electron acceptor. It's called a cyclic pathway because instead of going to the electron transport chain of photosystem one, these go back to the electron transport chain of photosystem two, to ferrodoxin, to the cytochrome, and so forth. And then after their energy's been extracted, they end up back in the re in the in P700. The energy given off during the passage down the chain is harnessed to produce ATP. ATP is the only product of cyclic electron flow. Neither oxygen nor NADPH is produced from this pathway. One more thing we want to talk about before we leave the light reactions is chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis is an energy coupling mechanism that uses energy stored in the form of a hydrogen ion gradient across the membrane to drive cellular work. We've learned about this when we learned about co-transport using a hydrogen ion gradient, but this is different here because this is being used to generate ATP. Most ATP synthesis in cells occurs by chemiosmosis. This occurs during photosynthesis in the chloroplast, as well as cellular respiration in the mitochondria. We're going to take a moment here to talk about the ways in which chemiosmosis is different in, is similar in photosynthesis and cellular respiration, and how it's different. Some similarities with chlor chloroplasts and mitochondria is that the electron transport chain pumps of both photosynthesis and cell respiration pump protons across the membrane as the electron is passed through a series of electron carrier carriers. Another similarity is that built into the membrane is a molecule of the enzyme ATP synthase. But what's different? In chloroplast, the source of high energy electrons is water. In cell respiration, the source is organic molecules like sugars. Another difference is the chloroplasts use light energy to drive electrons from water to the electron transport chain. Mitochondria use electrons that are that are gathered from that are harvested from the sugars that we eat. Another difference in chemiosmosis between mitochondria and chloroplasts is that in mitochondria, the protons diffuse down a concentration gradient through ATP synthase from the internal space out into the matrix of the mitochondria. In chloroplasts, protons flow from the internal space of the thylakoid out into the stroma. But the thing that's important and what's the same with the both of them is that the high concentration of protons leads to the passive flow of these protons through the molecule of ATP synthase. And as those protons flow through ATP synthase, they drive it like a water wheel to produce, to add, activating its enzymatic activity to add an inorganic phosphate to a molecule of ADP producing ATP. The next thing that we want to talk about is the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle uses ATP and NADPH and CO2 to build sugars. The Calvin cycle creates the energy that drives all life on Earth. The Calvin cycle is a metabolic pathway in which each step is governed by a particular enzyme. 
The Calvin cycle uses energy in the form of ATP and NADPH and is anabolic. It's a building pathway, not a breaking down pathway. We can break the Calvin cycle down into three steps. Phase one, carbon fixation. Phase two, reduction. And phase three, regeneration of the CO2 acceptor. Carbon fixation is when each CO2 molecule is incorporated by attaching it to the five carbon molecule called ribulose bisphosphate. This is done by an enzyme called Ribisco. The product is unstable and immediately splits in two. This unstable product immediately splits in half, forming two molecules of three phosphoglycerate for each CO2 that's fixed. Going back to Rubisco, Rubisco is the most abundant protein in chloroplast and thought to be mo the most abundant protein on Earth. Again, make sure you remember that Rubisco is the enzyme that takes the CO2s entering and attaches them to ribulose bisphosphate, producing a short-lived intermediate And make sure you understand that Rubisco is the enzyme that's important in the process of carbon fixation. The next, the next step of the Calvin cycle is phase two, reduction. During reduction, each molecule of 3-phosphoglycerate receives an additional phosphate group from ATP, becoming 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Next, a pair of electrons donated from NADPH reduce 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate, which also loses a phosphate group, into G3P, glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate. Each turn of the Calvin cycle fixes one molecule of CO2, so it will take three turns of the Calvin cycle to net one glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate. Glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate is a sugar and it can be used to make glucose and other sugars. It's important to note, it's also interesting to note that glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is the product of splitting glucose during glycolysis. Note that for every three molecules of CO2, there are six molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, but only one molecule of this three carbon sugar can be counted as a net gain. The rest of those glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates are going to be used to regenerate our CO2 acceptor ribulose bisphosphate in order to keep the Calvin cycle going. How does this happen? This happens in the regeneration step of the Calvin cycle. Ribulose bisphosphate is regenerated as the carbon skeletons of five glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates are rearranged to yield three ribulose bisphosphate molecules. This requires phosphates from three ATP molecules. So we have an input of energy here. So let's continue looking at figure 1018 here while we tally up the carbons. This figure is designed to show the production of one net glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This means that the Calvin cycle must be turned three times. Each turn will require a starting molecule of ribulose bisphosphate, a five-carbon compound. This means that we start with 15 carbons distributed in three RUBPs. After fixing three carbon dioxides using the enzyme Rubisco, the Calvin cycle forms six glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates with a total of 18 carbons. At this point, the net gain of carbons is three, or one G3P molecule. So therefore, three CO2 molecules, those that we started with, have been fixed. Let's count up the other parts of the cycle as well. The net production of one glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate requires nine molecules of ATP. Can you find them? Six here, whoops, and three here. And it also requires six molecules of NADPH. Where did these come from? They came from the light reactions.
now we're done learning about the two phases of photosynthesis in plants.